Hi, I'm Mike, owner of the Ingroup in Phoenix, Arizona. Today I'm going to go over the recently released Record Store Day 2023 list. These are kind of the titles that I think are going to be uh, popular for Record Store Day and or something that I'm looking forward to personally or stuff that, you know, I think my customers would dig. You know, I cater to uh, a lot of jazz clientele, audiophiles, so I kind of typically highlight those titles as well when I go over these lists. And uh, I gotta say right off the bat, they did a few things differently this year. First of all, they cut the list down to 300 titles. And it's not that I think they got rid of, you know, 200 titles. I think they got rid of 200 crappy titles. There's a lot of filler on record store days uh, in general. And I think this list overall is really lean and really mean. I think this is probably the best record store day list in maybe four or five years. It's extremely solid. There's gonna be multiple titles on this list that are gonna cause people to queue up. And it's got a strong combination of uh, live shows, unreleased stuff, and long-awaited represses. So a good record store day list has about five to 10 titles that'll that'll you know that'll appeal to everybody. You don't want to get yourself in a situation as a store to where you know the only thing causing somebody to line up is one title because record store day sometimes it's work. I think of it as a joy and a lot of people dig it, but some people aren't into standing in line and hanging out for a couple hours and you know shooting the breeze with uh, strangers in the line. So a good list will have enough titles to where somebody will say, you know what, I'll do it because I don't want to have to pay flipper prices on 10 titles. I, I might have did it on one, but I'm not going to do it on 10 titles. So this list, I think, is really strong. I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to this as a consumer, looking forward to this as a store because I always dig when people come into the store and they're excited as opposed to like, you know, and sometimes that is the vibe with some of the record store day lists. A couple of things. We open the same time every year. I believe it's 8 o'clock. I should know this because we open the same time every year. But one of the things I do that's unique is I live stream the entire day. From the minute we open to the minute we close, I live broadcast on YouTube the entire Record Store Day. So I'll have that on Record Store Day. Uh, this year will be no exception. Hopefully I can get the music squared away to where I don't have to play uh, 10 hours of lo-fi beats. Or last year I think it was 10 hours of... Mozart's, what was it? Maybe it's Mozart's Requiem, I think we listened to for 10 hours straight because I found a, a YouTube friendly version. So we'll see about that. All right, let's go over the list. This is kind of uh, got my list here. I printed it off a record store day. A lot of people will do this. You can print it. Uh, it's kind of a good, while you're in line, it's kind of a good, uh, a good cheat sheet. Okay. Roy Ayers, Live in 66. This is from Org Music. They did a lot of uh, the Bernie Grunman cut stuff back in the day for John Coltrane. They're doing Live in 66, Roy Ayers, Stone Soul Picnic. They're only doing 1,900 of them. So I think this is going to be a desirable title. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, one of the things I will say in general is not a lot of these titles have the quantities I would have assumed. It seemed like for a lot of years, the quantities were being ratcheted up. I feel like, except for a few exceptions, the quantities on this list has been ratcheted down. 1,900 is not a terribly lot of records. Uh, and I think that's gonna leave a lot of people out on the cold, in the cold. This, I think for me, will be one of the best, actually I looked up the wrong title. <laughs> Oh, I put the notes on the wrong titles. They're doing Chet Baker's Chet on Riverside. Uh, they have a stereo release that's been out for a while. Uh, I have not been able to keep it in stock. It's been repressed a few times. It sells out immediately. This is the mono uh, copy. First time it's ever been reissued. Came out in 59. First time since 59, it's getting a reissue. It's gonna be all analog, cut by Kevin Gray, similar to the stereo, but this is gonna be the dedicated mono mix. They're doing 6,000. 525. Maybe they wanted to do like 7,000 and 475 of them got damaged. I'm not really sure what the deal is with the 6525 because uh, that doesn't even seem to me like a 
case pack situation, you know, where you can get X amount of records in a case. So this is why you would make 6525. I have no clue what's going on there. But I can tell you that is going to be an extremely hot and extremely desirable title. And I don't think it is going to be that easy to get. It ticks all the boxes. It's an iconic jazz album. It's all analog. It's Kevin Gray. Uh, and it's not been reissued since 1959. That record's going to be in demand. It reminds me the Kraft did the Art Pepper meets uh, the Rhythm section. That, I think they did six, they did a few more copies. I think they did 6,000 of them. But one of the things was they did a 6,000 of them. It sold out. Everybody was upset. You couldn't get it. The price started ticking up. I saw that record going for around $100. All of a sudden, the distributors had tons more, and I was able to order like hundreds and hundreds of more copies. So the price came down uh, normally. Assuming that doesn't happen with this Chet Baker, it is going to be very in demand. Uh, Art Blakey, live at the Jazz Workshop. First, I'm doing them in order. I know we're doing a little jazz-heavy stuff, which this is a great jazz list. list. But uh, it just so happens that the stuff I'm focusing on uh, starts up with three jazz titles. Anyways, Art Blakey and the Jazz Messenger, live at the Jazz Workshop, 1970. It's an unreleased uh, show. There's only 1,800 of them. It's on Gearbox. So I'm looking forward to that. Love Art Blakey. The Cranberries. Wake up and smell the coffee. Personally love the Cranberries. It was the very first cassette tape that I ever owned. Uh, everybody else is doing it, so why can't we? So uh, getting a new cassette tape back in the 90s for me was, a, was an event. Didn't have any money, so when I could get enough money together to buy a cassette tape, you know, it was something that I really dug. So I've always been a big Cranberries fan. This album has never come out on vinyl. Uh, everything of hers, everything of theirs that has come out on vinyl that hasn't been reissued, the originals are extremely expensive. And I guess even the stuff that's been reissued, the originals of her stuff, I keep saying the Lord, keep saying her. The, the reissues of the Cranberry stuff, there's really nothing out there, and the originals go for a ton of money. They're only doing 4,000 of these. I think that's going to be really hot, really desirable. They've got a big fan base, 4,000 of an album that's never come out on vinyl. Yeah, it's a record store day first, meaning it could theoretically get repressed, maybe on a different color variation or something of that nature. They don't typically repress it exactly the same, so they keep some of the exclusivity here to it. But that doesn't always necessarily happen. A lot of record store day firsts, they don't ever materialize as a future release. This next one, The Cure Show. From 1993. The originals of this came out in Europe, I think, in 93. Originals of this, three, five hundred bucks. It's a damn picture disc. I don't know why The Cure keep doing this. Now, I will say, I listened to one of their uh, earlier picture discs that were released earlier in the year, or a couple of years ago. Picture discs have come a long way to where they were, say, in the 80s, to where they just sounded like a hot mess. But, yeah, it's a picture disc. Why the hell didn't they release this thing as vinyl? Just a standard black vinyl. They did Wish as a picture disc. They did it as black vinyl. Maybe they'll do this as black vinyl. I don't know. Uh, they only did Wish as black vinyl. I, don't, I think the other 90s albums that they've released in the past, they didn't go back and reissue on black vinyl, although they did Wish. Uh, yeah, it's going to be in demand. No doubt about it. Picture disc, it doesn't matter that, you know, the Cure stuff still sells relatively well. This next one, I got a chuckle when I listened to it. Now, Give you two seconds story time here. Miles Davis, they're doing Turnaround, the unreleased rare vinyl from On the Corner. They did a big suitcase a few years back, which essentially had everything recorded for Columbia and all the session stuff. It was like 10 box sets, came in a briefcase, had a uh, piece of his trumpet in it, the mouthpiece, exceptionally well done. And it was like, whatever, 9, 10 CDs for On the Corner. They're starting to do these like highlights from the complete recordings of. So it's like a sampler from the complete recordings of uh, On the Corner. I've got a friend who recently, he's uh, fell on some hard times. He used to love playing poker. So he's been dragging me to this free poker at a bar. <laughs> I do it because he's a buddy. I want to hang out with him, spend time together, you know 
comfortable for him. We go to this bar, we play poker. They've got this jukebox that you can control with your phone. I was there one day, I was playing some Coltrane, I was playing some Miles. Everybody started flipping it out, flipping out. I actually found it kind of fascinating. Angel was there with me. She's giving me the stink eye off to the side, like, stop playing this shit. I thought it was hilarious. They really started getting angry and like, this is garbage. And, you know, they started doing this speech. I'm like, all right. So I was started looking up Archie Shep, some the avant-garde stuff. You know, I'm looking up the later Pharaoh Sanders, the later Coltrane. They didn't have any of that stuff on the jukebox, but they had Miles Davis on the corner. So I paid to play the entire album. And I, and I moved it to the front of the queue. <laughs> and, oh, man, it drove everybody absolutely nuts, including the bartender who came and unplugged the jukebox. I think it's a fantastic album. It's his Middle Eastern-inspired record. It's fantastic. But uh, as demonstrated by the uh, people at the bar who were playing, like, you know, the lamest, yes, most mundane radio rock tunes of all time. They weren't a fan, but who cares? I had a good time. It was funny. Maybe you had to be there. I don't know. Somebody might be watching this and saying, ah, oh, Mike, he's a prick. But if you were there, it was hilarious, I promise. If you love jazz, it was extra, extra funny. Okay, they're doing Eric Dolphy's The Musical uh, musical Prophet, The Expanded 1963, New York Studio Sessions. It's on Residence Records. It's a 3LP set. If it sounds familiar, that's because it was released in 2018 as a record store day title, and they're just reissuing it. They're only doing 2,000 of them this time, but they're doing it with an alternative cover. So if you are a completist, you're kind of screwed because now you got to go back and buy that. And I myself am a completist, but I won't be buying a second one of those. Okay. They started doing these three-inch records a while back that have their own dedicated three-inch turntable, and they're, they're cool. They're like a novelty, right? But... I've kind of tried to like, I get them and sometimes I get them and sometimes I don't. I try to avoid getting the three inch records, but they sucked me in this year. They're doing the doors and I, and I have one of these little record players. It was the very first video I ever put on YouTube that went kind of viral. I woke up one day earlier on in YouTube before the pandemic, I woke up and I went from like a hundred, 200 views to like 50,000 views. So that player has kind of a sentimental place in my heart because it was the first video I was like woke up and I'm like what what happened like what the hell's going on and it was essentially just me doing an unboxing of that record player when it came out it's just so yeah it's crazy but they're doing a three inch single of break on through love her madly hello I love you and then they're doing a special doors version of that turntable with the three singles in it so I'm, it's typically Crosley that does it, and you got to order it direct from them. Uh, I'm going to just bite the bullet and do it. Don't want to, but I'm going to. Bill Evans, Treasures, Solo Trio and Orchestra in Denmark. This is weird because it says it's Anagram Music, but the cover says Resonance Records on it. All of the Bill Evans stuff, and they're only doing 4,000 of these. All the Bill Evans stuff from Resonance Records has been extremely in demand. There was a couple of titles sonically that weren't fantastic, but all the ones that do sound good, and unfortunately you don't really know until after the case, but all the records from them that do sound good go for like 100, 200 bucks. So the Bill Evans stuff sells like hotcakes. It's always in demand. I, this is good. Even 4,000 copies, not enough. This is going to be a very in demand title. People are going to be after it. Okay, this isn't going to be a wildly expensive record in demand or anything, but I figured I'd mention it. Generation X, Billy Idol's first band, Ready, Steady, Go. Fantastic record, not in print. Uh, they're going to do it as a record store day exclusive. So, yeah, one shot, only on record store day. They're doing a Grateful Dead box set. The uh, Boston Garden, live at 77, not a big Grateful Dead fan. The Grateful Dead stuff always is in demand, always sells. Uh, I always try to carry it deep. I love Billy Joel personally. A couple of years ago, I think two years ago, maybe it was last year, they did a live Billy Joel concert. I ordered a decent amount. I didn't order nearly enough. It was really popular, and people were really after it. Uh, I think this year is going to be similar. This is live at the Great American Music Hall, 1975, two LP set on Columbia. Elton John, they're doing a two-disc set of Don't Shoot Me, I'm Only the Piano Player, similar to the self-titled album. 
his second album technically after Empty Sky with your song on it. They did a two LP version of it that had a bonus disc of demo material, kind of similar to what the deluxe CDs had for years. They're doing a Don't Shoot Me, I'm the Only, I'm the only the Piano Player version of it. 4,000 copies, not a lot for Elton John. And the second disc has all of those demos on it. So, will be desirable. Nora Jones, Little Broken Hearts. This is live. This is a live studio. So kind of like the uh, Oingo Boingo direct uh, uh, Boingo Live that they essentially went to a studio to do a live record. This is the same thing. But it was done in 2022. And essentially she's recording Little Broken Hearts live. Fantastic live. Love Nora Jones. I'm not a huge female vocalist fan. And I love Nora Jones. She's great. Wonderful voice. Uh, and one of her better albums, so I'm looking forward to that. Here's an honorable weird mention. I have no interest in this whatsoever, but it's John Lennon, so it's going to sell. They're doing a 9-LP, 10-inch box set. Not 10-inch, 12, or not, excuse me, not LP, 12-inch LPs, but 10 inches. They're doing 9, 10-inch, it's a 9, 10-inch box set of Gimme Some Truth. Like... I'm going to order it because there's Beatle fans that got to have everything. If there's Beatle printed toilet paper, they want to own it. So I got to buy it. But, man, I really hope these things sell out because the last thing I want to do is be running up with a bunch of, you know, stocking a bunch of 10-inch box sets of the John Lennon's Give Me Some Truth. You know, it's essentially like a, what? It's a greatest hits box set kind of deal. New remixes. Yeah. Oh boy, there is some weird stuff on Record Store Day, although there always should be some sort of beat. I wish they would do more Beatles related things. There's got to be something over there, you know what I mean? Give us the alternate anthology anthology or something. You know, there's got to be something in there they could give us. But yeah, they're doing Stevie Nicks, Belladonna Live, 1981. I'm pretty sure this is a breakout from a CD, deluxe CD set that came out a while back. And if that's the case, it is a unbelievably killer concert. She's on point. Really good show. They're doing like 10,000 of them. It seems like a lot. It's Stevie Nicks. It's quite possible those get gobbled up quickly and it's not enough. I'm not sure. Kind of on the cusp there. Two LP set. Another person who has a fanatical cult following. That is Dolly Parton's. Uh, the Monument Singles Collection that's coming out in 68. Dolly Parton. Heavily, heavily, heavily collected. Uh, they're only doing 5,500 of these. So I think this is going to be desirable. Record Store Day exclusive as well, so it's not getting reissued. Uh, yeah, it kind of ties in nicely with the uh, Final Me Please is doing exclusive Dolly Parton club to where you subscribe and you get Dolly Parton records every month instead of, you know, random records. You know what you're getting ahead of time. I subscribe to it. I think the beginning of them are going to be the first RCA stuff is going to be analog. Uh, I like her earlier RCA stuff, but this is going to be uh, all monument stuff. Okay, this next one, this is the stuff that lines people up outside the door and makes them want to come to Record Store Day. They're doing Pearl Jam's Giveaway. Giveaway is an Australian show on the Yield Tour. Interesting factoid. In the U.S., signs say Yield. In Australia, they say Giveaway. Get it? You see the joke there? Anyways... This originally came out kind of as a CD. It was a partial release and then recalled immediately. Some of them made their way out there. They are buku bucks, like a $500 to $1,000 CD. Very, very expensive. Very sought after. It's getting an official release on CD. They're doing 4,000 of them on CD, which in the grand scheme of things, 4,000 is not a lot. If they did 4,000 of these CDs back in the day, they theoretically could still be worth 500 to 1,000. Uh, but they're also doing it on vinyl, 2LP set, 15,500 of them on vinyl. I thought the MTV Unplugged that they did, they did a Buku amount like this, and they sold out like instantaneously, and it was like a $200 record. They kept reissuing it, essentially. It, I think it might have been the first time I ever saw them do that tour. They actually... Just more just kept coming. I, you know, my rep would come and say, hey, you want some more Record Store Day Pearl Jam and TV Unplugged? Yeah, oh yeah, send them, send them. Sell them, they go immediately out. And this like happened repetitively and it drove the price down. But when that initial 15,000 came out, 
that wasn't enough and the price was through the moon. So if that 15,500 holds true, this will still be very hard to get and very in demand. But it could very easily trickle out later on after the fact, kind of just like the uh, DGs did. Same, uh, same thing there, DGs, they're $400 record. It kept coming and coming and coming. There's a lot more of them in circulation, but it's still 200 bucks. Okay. All right, moving along here. Oh man, for me, love it. Might be the first title that I play. Elvis, Burn in Love, the RCA rehearsals. So they're coming out with Elvis live in 72, which is essentially a two disc set, kind of the best of the 72 on tour, six CD box set. They put it on two CDs. Personally, I would love like a 20 disc LP box set. I would just think it's 500 bucks, no problem. Sell it to me. There's tons of Elvis fans who would love it all on vinyl, but that is not happening. But they did a two LP kind of greatest hits live from that. For record store day, they're doing, there's essentially, I think that box set is what, six complete shows and then the rehearsals, or maybe it's five shows in the rehearsals on six CDs. For record store day, they're doing a two disc of the rehearsals. Love. Elvis live rehearsing is prime Elvis. I'm looking forward to this. Let's see. This is actually something else I'm looking forward to. Like I said, this is a great list. They're doing the Ramones, Pleasant Dreams. This is the uh, Grand Goldman mixes. So it's, uh, I'm guessing, I would assume those are the original mixes. Plus I think there's three bonus tracks on it with an alternate cover. That's kind of cool. I always enjoy alternate mixes of records. That's been really popular. They did it with Fleetwood Mac and they did it here on this. We're coming up to it, uh, another band. So that'll be popular. R Ramones, they typically get something every record store day. The live discs have always been popular. All right, so maybe uh, Apco uh, watched my previous video on the Rolling Stones, Let It Be, Hand Poured Crapola 900 for a $100 bill and a shitty-ass paper sleeve, and watch the video. It was an abomination. Uh, but here we have, and I'm assuming this is for a reasonable price, we have Beggar's Banquet on blue, black, and white vinyl. Not hand poured, doesn't have a certificate of authenticity, but they're doing 9,000 of them, and I believe this is a normal price record. I haven't got the pricing yet, I won't for a couple of days. I'm assuming this is a normal price record with the original cover, too, the toilet cover, by the way, of Beggar's Banquet. This will be in demand, Rolling Stones fans, myself included. Love the Rolling Stones, love getting all the Rolling Stones stuff, alternate stuff. Okay, personally, I don't know how this is gonna do. But Sparks, always have loved Sparks. Uh, they had a documentary that really revived their career. I don't know if it's revived their career, but it really put them into the mainstream for people's, you know, in their consciousness to where people that I would assume never heard of Sparks, I see them now at the store buying Sparks records. But their original two albums that were on uh, Todd Rudgren's, what is it, Bearsville label, they're reissuing. One of them was originally, the band wasn't called Sparks. In the beginning it was Half Nelson. That album got reissued as Sparks, like essentially a self-titled album. And then the uh, second album was A Woofer in Tweeter's Clothing. <laughs> great title. Great. Re both of these records are great. Anyways, Friday Music is doing both of those albums. Both of those albums. It's Record Store Day first. Looking forward to those. I have originals of them. The Half Nelson, very hard to get. But I think it's cool get that Getting those, you know, not for me, but getting those into people's hands. More sparks, always good. More sparks, the better. Okay, and wrapping up. Now, there's plenty of stuff on this list you might be digging, but this, again, is the stuff that I feel is going to be really strong. And the stuff that uh, I personally am looking forward to. But I'll tell you what, you know what lines, you know what, you know what gets the lines going on Record Store Day? T-Swift. And you know what's even going to really drag them in? Not just a seven-inch single of a track that maybe has been released or maybe hasn't been released, but how about a complete album of something that's completely unreleased? Unrele Taylor Swift folklore. Don't know squat about Taylor Swift, but essentially this album was done during lockdown. The musicians never played together. After lockdown, they went together and they essentially re-recorded this album it's all in the same room. That you know, old school. Typically, that yields a much better, more lively energetic recording, more personal, more, you know, more enthralling. If 
you're a Taylor Swift fan, I would imagine this is going to be pretty, pretty on your list. Uh, there's no number on this one. So uh, that could be two things. They could make enough of them to cover everybody, which wouldn't be a bad thing. They could make not, not nearly enough of these things, and then everybody has a meltdown. And since they're not making a ton of them, they don't want to give everybody, you know, they don't want to send everybody into a frenzy. Uh, you know, they don't want another Ticketmaster type situation, so they haven't released the number. I don't know, but I'll tell you this too: it's an exclusive release, so it's not a re it's not getting reissued. And of course, I always want to mention the uh, Jazz Dispensary Hotel Joel Dame from Kraft. The Jazz Dispensary stuff always extremely good and always in demand. A couple more titles. Last two. You know, I saw this on the list, and I was like, man, I hadn't heard that in 25 years. Maybe 25 years, yeah. The Verve Pipe. Villains. That has never been reissued, or never released on vinyl. It has the big hit Freshman on it, which I heard relentlessly back in the 90s. And when I saw this, I'm like, hey, you know, I wouldn't mind hearing that song again. Now, in the 90s, I would have told you, please turn that crap off. I don't want to hear that one more effing time. But I don't know. Now, maybe it's growing on me a little bit. I wonder what the rest of the album sounds like. I might end up getting that. And last but not least, they're doing an alternate version of Wilco's Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. I guess it was released on a big massive box set that they did a while back, but this is a standalone version. But I think this is kind of uh, following that alternate Fleetwood Mac, which was a huge success. The alternate Fleetwood Mac, they sold tons of copies. Essentially, they recreated albums with alternate takes. The uh, Beatles did it for the Sgt. Pepper uh, anniversary 2LP set. Oddly enough, that went out of print quick. I'm not sure why. But it's been a really popular formula. I think that'll do really, really well as well. Again, I think we open at 8 o'clock. You could check our Facebook out for details on it. I'll have to get that uh, posted. I believe we always start at 8 o'clock. We live stream all day long. And keep in mind, too, everything that doesn't sell in store on record store day goes up. I think it's 8 o'clock Eastern time, so maybe that's 6 o'clock Arizona time, 5 o'clock Arizona time. I'd have to look, but everything that is still available in the store will be put online the following day on the website, theingroove.com. And also, uh, yeah, everything will be online, but yeah, what was I going to say? I'll give you guys a video update. When we get closer, I do unboxings and I do videos for Record Store Day. So there'll be a lot more Record Store Day related videos coming up soon. All right, guys, check us out online. Until next time.